Welcome, everyone, to Blissful Flow. We are on a chakra series. This is the third week, which means we're on the third chakra. So a chakra means disc or wheel. What it's really uh, representing is a center of energy. If you were to break down the physical anatomy of the body, you would see big bundles of nerves in each of these places where we typically talk about the chakras. Um, they also govern certain physicalities in the body, certain glands of the body. Um, there's psychological lessons, spiritual lessons with each of these energy centers. So we've already discussed heavily the first and the second. So I'm just gonna go ahead and begin talking about the third. So the element here is fire, the color is yellow. I tried to wear the closest thing I have to yellow today, <laughs> um, but it's about being radiant. And I mentioned with color therapy on Monday, the color yellow uh, helps to evoke joy and happiness. So when we're in a balanced state, we're optimistic, we're joyful, we're finding um, our sense of freedom, our personal power, we are independent, we're confident, we have a strong sense of self-esteem, we have a good sense of humor. So think about how humor and laughter is good medicine for the gut. The gut is said to be the second brain. Um, we have the digestive tract sitting here. I mentioned on Monday, it's not just about what we're consuming, digesting, and assimilating as we eat to fuel our bodies, but it's also how are we consuming digesting and assimilating life and life experiences. And we are being hit in the gut big time right now. So I know I'm off in this place because I've been feeling disempowered. Whenever you feel disempowered, you know this is the third chakra issue. Um, and that just means we've got some work to do on ourselves. The demon or the counter force is anger and stress. So a lot of stress is gonna cause a stomach ulcer. A lot of anger is going to create a lot of upset with the liver and the gallbladder and the functions that they have in our bodies. So any type of ulcers, digestive issues, or any disease within this, within these organs is again showing a major uh, imbalance to this energy field. So we want to try to keep it as balanced as possible. We're not going to get into a political discussion about this, but I want you to look at it from a yogic viewpoint. Okay, from a yoga viewpoint, we are dealing with third chakra issues right now with this COVID vaccine, right? We have people that are taking different uh, stands with it. There are some people that are gung-ho, believe in it 100%, and they want to push it on everyone else. And then you have another uh, group that is absolutely against it. They're freaked out about it. They're fearful of it for whatever reason, and they are not wanting it at all. And then you have this group in the middle that's kind of more or less just wanting some medical freedom. They're not really pulled towards one agenda or the other. They're just thinking about their own sovereignty, their own body, and they're trying to make their own choice and what is best for them. So we have these different kind of groups about this one singular topic. This is all third chakra stuff. Third chakra is about willpower, it's about independence, it's about the freedom to make your own choice. And that's where the battle is in society. And that's also what we're kind of absorbing right now. Last year, with the pandemic and everything shutting down, it was all first chakra stuff. Hitting our finances and families and friendships splitting because of everything occurring and all the different opinions, that's second chakra stuff. So we're kind of moving up the ladder, which I think is really good, because as we move upstream, guess what's next? Next week, we'll discuss the heart. The heart is the place of integration. The heart is where the opposites come together and create a union. So let's just hope we're in that trajectory. <laughs> and we're moving upstream, and we're going to find out harmony with each other again. Okay? We're going to start with breath of fire. 
Breath of fire is about pumping the belly in. Think about how oxygen fuels the flame. And we're gonna be pumping the belly in, but instead of breathing in, we're gonna be breathing out in a short, sharp manner, just through the nose. You can find your own cadence. It can be slow, moderate, or rapid, but I would suggest taking the hands here across your belly, where you know maybe one of the fingers is pointed close towards the navel center. The third chakra really is above the navel to the breastbone, but it looks like this. If you're trying to get pregnant or think you might get pregnant, don't do it. I don't want to assume anything in this room. <laughs> so I'll just, we're all gonna have our eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> about the inhalation, it will naturally come. Okay, let's sit up nice and tall and let's begin. Think about stoning your inner agni, your inner fire. Three, two, one, relax a moment. Let your belly be soft, let it balloon out as you inhale, and let it retract in as you exhale. Second round, breath of fire. This can manipulate the energy enough so it changes and alters the temperature of the body. You wouldn't want to do this if you're having a hot flash because it will build more heat. It's a good detox for the stomach. Three, two, one, let it go. We're just going to do one more round. Think about this time, seeing that flame ablaze and the flames coming up towards the heart. Let's begin. Three, two, and one. And relax the hands to your lap. We're going to do a Kriya before we come down to the belly. And this Kriya is good for the liver, which helps to cleanse anger and resentment. Lift your arms up into the goddess formation. And we're going to twist to the left on the inhale and twist to the right on the exhale. Now I like to speed up the breath, so it really is repetitive action. But of course you can go at any pace of your liking. Depends on how your back responds, especially since it's earlier in the day. But any twists are good for all seven of the chakras, but primarily the third. It helps to trim the weights. It helps to get some of the lactic acid out of the muscles in the back. It stretches the muscles that attach to the spine. It helps to does the sweet uh, rinse and soak effect to the abdominal organs and glands. It cleanses our respiration. Three, two, and one. Come back to stillness. Rest your palms open on your lap. Close the eyes and gaze in and up towards your mind's eye. Any of that swirling energy or sensation that you're experiencing in your body, and it may be more pronounced in certain places. Maybe it is in your abdomen. Maybe it's in your arms. Wherever it's showing up, try to magnetize it towards the third eye. The spiritual reference point between the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. 
Bring your hands to prayer position at your heart. Affirming as you hold. I have the right to exercise my choice. I have the right to exercise my own freedom and independence. This is one of the lessons of the third chapter. Then open up the eyes, remove that prop if you happen to be sitting on one, and you're going to come down to a bone position. So we're lining up the legs so that they're splitting open, feet to either edge of the mat. Your arms are going to cross in front of you, and you're going to lay the head down. So this is meant to be a passive pose. We have a little upliftment in the chest. But I want you to notice where the weight is landing on your mat. Notice the primary weight here is in the abdomen. So sink and surrender down through your belly. And then I want you to invite some diaphragmatic breaths. Breathing in and out through the nose with conscious control so that you feel your belly swelling and pushing into the ground on the inhale and softening and relaxing away from the ground on the exhale. So anytime we're able to do diaphragmatic breathing, where we're breathing down into our midsection, this helps to decrease stress. Remember, stress is one of the enemies of the third chakra. This also helps to need the internal organs because when that diaphragm muscle is parachuting up and down beneath the ribs, it's actually attached to the inner organs and that movement that you feel in your core is actually the organ shifting around. Now imagine this faint, flame is a blaze here, or you can imagine it being a ball of fire like the sun. And I want you to consider, as we exercise choice, we can also initiate will. Through exercising our will, we develop our individuality. Our individuality being our strengths, our characteristics, and even our weaknesses. And this builds the power to steer our lives, to steer our direction, to steer our motivations. The purpose of the third chakra is to transfer inertia into movement and action. So let the fire continue to move upward, transforming matter to heat and light, giving you the ability to see and to act. All right, we're going to take that left arm to the left side of the body, palm flattened down. Zip the feet and legs back together. Slide your right hand in front of your chest as you lower to your left ear. Roll to your whole left side body. Pick up the right foot, bend that knee, and tap the big toe behind your straight leg. So the right knee lifting up towards the sky is gonna work with the second chakra, but the twist is working primarily with third. And in broken wing, notice we're also getting this stretch through the left arm and shoulder, which is good for the fourth, the heart. Take one more deep breath here. And then as you exhale, unroll from the twist, come to reside on your chin, Extend your right arm to your right side, and then turn to your right ear, slide your left hand in, roll to the right side body, pick up the left foot, stack it behind your right leg. Uplift your left knee towards the heavens. When we externally rotate the hip or abduct it away from the midline, like we are on this left side now, sometimes we can feel a little catch in the hinge. Sometimes that shows up in the piriformis, other times it's tightness or limitation. 
in the gluteus medius. So try not to push beyond your edge. If you feel that catch, pause there and breathe into it. One more deep breath. And as you exhale, unroll, come back to the belly, straighten the left leg out. Now slide both the forearms in, stacking the elbows below the head of the shoulder bones. Make the forearms parallel with each other, slight open through the fingertips, and stretch back through your legs and feet. When you activate your legs, it's going to engage your glutes. When you engage your glutes, push down through your tailbone and pubic bone a little bit more and feel how your navel starts to try to draw in and up towards your heart. Let those muscles work together and then lift up to the crown of your head. So the pubic bone is the primary base here. We're trying to draw the prana up to the heart. One more breath. Earning here, I rise joyfully for each and every new opportunity. I've been listening to some astrology based on September. It's gonna be a doozy. I rise upward to greet each and every new opportunity. But predicting a little bit more polarity, so just be forewarned. Okay, rest on your fist and hide your thumbs away. Curl the toes under, lift your kneecaps. All right, so now we're going to engage third chakra. We're going to use Uddiyana Bandha to zip up through the midriff. The quads hugging towards the thigh bones, and the belly is hugging in towards your backbone. One more deep breath. Keep the core strong, keep the breath strong, and then exhale, return down to the feet pose. Good. Flatten the palms of the hands, curl the toes under, and we're going to try it this way, which I feel is a little bit harder personally. <laughs> you can be your own judge, right? we all have different experiences. What is this experience like for you? Maybe you feel your triceps far up a little bit more. That's what I'm experiencing. One more deep breath. On your exhale, however, you're gonna walk one knee forward and then the other. So you're coming like a tabletop position, but down on forearms. Curl your toes under, lift up and back to dolphin. So you're on your forearms, the fingers are splayed. You're lifting up and out of your shoulders, pushing back away from your hands. Soar the hips up high. Try to press back through the back of your legs. Let the head hover above the floor. Take one last breath. Exhale, descend down to your knees. Now bring the palms together, lace the fingers tight, reach back up through your sit bones, coming to this form of dolphin. Again, noticing the difference. Is this easier or harder with this hand position? But then I want you to make sure that your belly's elongated, nice and wide and open and free. Good, exhale, lower down to your knees, untuck the toes, and circle the arms around your body, slinking back into Balasana, child's pose. So just lay the belly over the lap, forehead rests on the floor. So if you're ever dealing with third chakra stuff, I know a lot of people prefer extended child's pose with the knees apart. But this is better for the third chakra, this particular approach to child's. So moments where you're feeling disempowered, come into this position instead. Some of the traumas that can affect the center, authoritarianism, 
domination, being controlled, being manipulated, violence, and terrorism. What's going on in Afghanistan is third chakra stuff. Third chakra is the seat of the ego, and the ego can sometimes get out of control, wanting control. Inhale, now stretch your arms forward and out. Lengthen out through the arms, walk the fingertips away. Continue to keep your head bowed in between the upper arm bones and affirm mentally within. Our prayer is for all of mankind to live in harmony and in peace. May we all rise above these lower chakras and enter into those higher centers, especially the place of integration of the heart. Inhale, lift up to all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog. When you arrive to downward facing dog, go ahead and immediately walk the hands back towards the feet. We need to open up the hamstrings before we get into our next flow. So the first thing I want you to notice is whether or not you're truly grounding and rooting your feet. Most of us don't. Most of us are just standing here, not really applying the work. So apply the work down through the soles of the feet. That will ignite the legs. Now we're already hinging from the hips, but what are you doing in your belly? Most of us just spill out, myself included. I have to remind myself to hug the belly in. We need abdominal support for the back, just like we need quad support here for the hamstring work. So on your next inhale, slide your hands up to your shin bones, prop yourself up, look out with your eyes, and notice how we typically just let the belly hang. Now, if a teacher ever says arch up, this is what they're mentioning. This is what they're wanting. They're wanting a little low back sway. But if they're saying Ardha Uttanasana, pour it back over and down, we're gonna do that differently. Inhale, come up again to your shins, but elongate the vertebrae, keep the shoulders backing away from the face, but also equally hug the belly in and up towards your back body. Notice the difference. Good, exhale, pour back over and down, magnetizing the heart core towards your shins. Good, inhale, arch up. Let your belly just be soft and let it hang free. Right, this is more about heart chakra. Exhale, release. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Come back up again, strong core, belly hugging in, support your low back, so support the disc as well. And then exhale, descend back in. Now we're ready to flow. Walk your hands forward and out to downward facing dog. And for downward facing dog, push up and out of your shoulders, up and out of your base ribs. The longer you extend your limbs, your spine, you're going to help to open up the belly. Exhale, drop your knees. Untuck the toes. Come into upward facing dog. Stay on the steps of the arms. Make sure your heels don't slide out. They're staying parallel. That will engage the glute muscles. And then exhale back to extended child's pose. Do that a couple more rounds. Inhale, rock forward and up. Upward facing dog, we space the belly. And then exhale back to get a little compression to the belly. One more. Inhale, rocking up. Exhale into extended child's pose. This time, inhale, rocking up, upward facing dog. Curl the toes under and roll back to downward facing dog. All right, we're going to change up the flow here. So make sure your feet are just a few inches apart. Lift your right leg skyward. Exhale, take downward scorpion, bending the top knee, turning open from the hips. Inhale, unroll the hip. Exhale, cheetah, nose towards knee, shoulders over hands. Inhale, flare the right leg up and back and downward facing dog. Exhale to downward scorpion, twist open. 
Inhale, unroll. Exhale, cheetah, contract your core around the back. One more of those. Inhale, ekka para almukasvanasana. Exhale, downward scorpion. Inhale, unroll. Exhale, cheetah. This time, inhale, send the right leg straight up and back. As you exhale, we're stepping the foot forward and up between the hands. Find your blocks. We're going to use them today. Set your hands on your blocks and make sure they're aligned underneath your shoulders. Pluck up your back thigh and then sink back to your calf and heel. Now lunge the front knee a little bit extra. Draw the shoulders back away from the ears and then draw the navel in and up as well. Incorporate the third chakra. Good, exhale, turn and plant your back foot. Slowly straighten out the right leg. Now look down. Your right hand, do you see how now your right hand is forward of the shoulder? I want the block to come back so you're lining it up again. So the right block's going to come back. Push down heavy through your right foot. Through your back foot, get your legs fired up. Let your left arm hang free. I want you to feel the twist in regular triangle. So slowly sail. The left arm out and up. Create a nice elongation through the vertebrae. A nice opening in your midsection. So you're not collapsing in your belly or chest. Exhale, bring the left hand down. Let just hang free. Now, before you do anything else, again, apply the pressure to the feet. Engage through the right hip, slightly tucking that sit bone under, and sail the left arm back up towards the heavens. This time, rolling up through the chest, tacking through your shoulders, finding a good position for your neck. Setting your jersey at one particular place. Exhale, bring the hand down. All right, try to keep that same alignment through the lower body. Keep lifting up through the knees. Sail the left arm back up. Take deep breaths. And then include the affirmation. Energy and joy flow down to me. Imagine you're receiving all that light and heat and energy from the sun and directing it to your solar plexus, your mani pura center. Exhale, bring the left hand down to the block. Walk your right block up. Now we're gonna turn away from the back heel. We're gonna do revolving triangle differently. So both legs are straight. We're gonna put the weight into the left hand and we're gonna circle the right arm out and up towards the sky. Notice where you have limitation in your revolving twist. If it's low back, it's first, second chakra. If it's mid back, it's third or fourth chakra. If it's upper back or neck, it is fourth or potentially the fifth. Exhale, bring the right hand down. All right, inhale once more, bringing it out and up. Now notice your right hip, can you tuck it in? Can you extend long through the spine, through the crown of the head? Can you reach and extend the right fingertips upward? Exhale, bring the right hand down. Well, if we're gonna have a ring, that's a nice one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> inhale, right arm reaches out and up. Fits, right? <laughs> Exhale, lower the right hand down, lunge that front knee. Now we'll set the blocks to the side, plant the palms, Stepping into plank. Exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to Urdhva Mukha Sanasana. And exhale to Adho Mukha Sanasana. All right, now we're getting reestablished here. This is where we started that previous flow. Make sure there's not too much space between the big toes. 
Make sure your abdomen is wide open and free. Inhale, the left leg lifts. Exhale, the downward scorpion. Inhale, unroll. Exhale, nose to knee, cheetah. Doesn't have to touch though. Inhale, uplift your left leg, long linear lines. Exhale, downward scorpion. Cautious with the inner right thigh. Inhale, unroll the twist. Exhale, cheetah, contract your core. One more complete set. There's an action with each breath. We're not rushing through the transitions. That's where the magic comes into play. Synchronizing movement with breath. Now inhale, left leg flares up. Exhale, step it all the way through. That's the action step. <clears throat> the action, the motivation, the will to do something, third chakra. Stack your hands on your blocks. We're going to focus on this pose first. Ground the left foot more than your hands. Keep the front knee aligned over the ankle. Keep lengthening the front thigh bone as you pluck your back thigh up towards the sky. Draw the heart and allow it to shine ahead and plug the belly in. Turn and place your back foot down. Slowly straighten out the right leg and let your right hand be removed from the block. Again, notice we're no longer aligned with the left arm. So walk the left block back to your steps. Condition your feet down and circle the right arm skyward. Treat the Nasana triangle pose. So Barbara, if you come more to your left fingertips, yeah, and straighten the front leg a little bit more. And now lift your head a little bit more. Good, that's it. Exhale, bring the right hand down, just let it hang. I want you to feel the twist. All right, inhale, plug those feet down, circle the right arm out and up, rotate through your belly, rotate with your chest, stack through your shoulders. Energize the top hands. Find your drishti. Exhale, release the right arm. All right, third one. Inhale, bring it out and up. Maybe you've even noticed a slight progression as you put a little bit more detail or focus in what you're doing. And then bring in the affirmation, energy, and joy flow down to me. Joyfulness, sense of humor, being one of the positive qualities of this energy field. Exhale, bring the right hand down. Spin away from the back heel. Bring the left block forward. Okay, so again, hands located underneath the shoulders. Your right hip is rolling towards your front foot. All right, when you're ready, let's circle the left arm out and up. You're going to feel the IT band, the out seam of the left leg, get more engaged. That may be your limitation. Don't fight or resist it, honor it. Exhale, release the arm. All right, second one, inhale, revolve the twist. Consider what you want to throw into the fire. Something that's outdated, something you've outgrown, something that's no longer needed or useful, maybe just some toxins or tension. Exhale, release. Last one, inhale, open it back up. Of how a fire is brought at its base and has its point at the top. That's what we're representing, even in the shape here the fire of transformation. Exhale, bring the hand down, lunge the front knee, we'll lose the block, set them off to the side. We're stepping the back foot forward, we're arching up, 
a little low back sway, belly soft. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Belly hugs in, the back is elongated. Exhale, release. Inhale, arch up. Exhale, bow over. Last one, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. The core is included here. And then exhale, fold in half. On your next in breath, circle the arms out and up. Coming to Urdhva Hastasana. Root to the feet. Nice your legs. Pull up to your sideways. Draw up to your floating ribs. Pull up through the sternum, up to the crown. Feel the spaciousness across the abdominal walls. Exhale, hands together and pour over. One, two, pour over and down. Inhale, take plank. Exhale, lower to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, arrive to upward facing dog. Exhale, roll back to downward facing dog. All right, when we arrive to downward facing dog, we're going to lift the right leg up. Exhale, downward scorpion. Inhale, unroll the hip. Exhale, cheetah. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, take the twist. Inhale, remove the twist and exhale, contract your core. This time, inhale, the right leg flares up. We're gonna step it all the way through in between the hands. Okay, I don't think you box for this one. We're going to sit the left hand to the floor. We're going to sweep the right arm skyward. But I want you to look at your right leg. Because sometimes when I do this pose, that front leg gets a little funky. So keep the right knee over the ankle. You may have to lunge the knee a little bit more. If your right hip wings out, clip it in. Keep that action in the front leg as you exhale, thread the right arm underneath the thigh. Gaze down. Inhale, lift your head. Keep the action of the front leg. Take the twist. Exhale, release the arm. Thread and loop it under. Inhale, this time, take that third and final one. Bring the right hand to your thigh. Step the left arm to the opposite side of that front knee. And take the right arm up and back. It's a balancing pose. Good, exhale, unwind, plant the palms, right foot plank. Exhale, lower the chaturanga, come down to the floor. Walk the arms forward, take seats. Legs lengthen back. Buttocks gets a little tighter. Incorporate your core. Curl the toes, lift your knees first. Four seconds. Breathe. Feel the heat kindling, building, spreading. Thanks to lower. Think about when we get burnt out. We've been doing too much. We've been going and going and going and doing and doing and doing. We're burning out the fire. So again, third chakra side. All right, create your fist. Curl your toes. Light your fire. Come on up. Now I'm hearing the doors. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Good. Exhale, release. Come back to forearms. Crawl the knees in. We're going to do a couple dog bends before we go back to the club. Curl the toes, lift up and back, dog bend. So this is a good alternative for downward facing dog if you're ever feeling really tender or sensitive with your wrist. Although, as you can tell, it requires a lot for the triceps and the deltoids. Exhale, come down to your knees. 
Let's fire up the triceps more, lace the hands together, curl the toes, push up in that dog. Breathe well. Open up the supply into your belly. Try not to cut it off here. We cut it off when we shrink in the midsection or contract. We're extending here. Exhale, sink your knees. Return to flat palms. Return to downward facing dog. We're getting there. <laughs> Left leg lifts. Exhale, downward scorpion. Inhale, unroll. Exhale, cheetah. Inhale, lift. Exhale, take the twist at the top. Inhale, unroll the hips. Exhale, contract. All right, inhale, just flare the left leg up. Exhale, swing that foot through. Flatten your right hand. Inhale, left arm up. And then notice if your left knee backs away, lunge it a little more. If your left hip wings out, clip it in. Keep that action, it's hard to maintain, but try as you exhale lower and loop the arm under your back. Twice more, inhale. Exhale, release. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, hand to thigh. Pick up your right hand, cross it over to the other side. Left arm reaches up and back. Exhale, unwind the twist. Step it back to plank and lower your knees. Probably don't know. I shouldn't complain. I need third chakra. Corver's not my favorite, though. <laughs> Reach the right arm up. Star gazer. So I'm super, super, super stoked. I'm leading a yoga retreat in uh, Sedona next week. So the last two days, I've been researching, researching, researching. I discovered it's one of the few select cities that reduce light pollution for the sake of being able to stargaze. I love that. But this is stargazer pose. To exhale, lower the right hand down, curl the back toes under, and you're just gonna lean back for gravity of time. Inhale, we're coming right back up. Untuck the left toes. Now we're gonna strengthen the core and the hip by lifting the right leg. We're gonna carry straight back behind us. Now, try not to lift the leg any higher than your hip, otherwise you sway the back and lose your core work. Zip up through your midriff. You need it to create spinal balance. Left arm reaches out, alternate limbs reaching away from your center. Exhale, lower to table. All right, flip your left hand, thread and loop it under for thread the needle. This is one of my favorites. Keep it active. So meaning you're hugging the belly in, pressing lightly through the right hand, rolling towards uh, your left shoulder blade. You don't have to do this next step, okay? This may be enough. But if you want to pick up the right leg and just stretch it up and back, you can move into a balancing pose, but it does require action in your core. The core is actually what helps to stabilize the pose. Breathe. Exhale, release, and thread the left arm.
left leg to the left side. Stargazer, spin open to your left. Exhale, lower the left hand, curl the back toes, lean back briefly. Let me help them up. And curl the back toes. Lift your left foot and flex it. Slowly take it back behind you. Keep it at hip height or lower. Draw that navel in. When you're ready, final balance. Reach through those limbs. Stabilize through your core. Lower down to take it. Flip your right hand. Move into thread the needle. So Monday, we talked a little bit more about the chakra itself. We talked about the different muscle groups here. Today, I wanted to work all of the muscle groups here in the midsection. Monday, we worked primarily on transverse abdominis. But today, we were working that the rectus abdominis as well as the side oblique. If you want to move into the balancing phase, remember the core needs to stay united as you lift and extend your left leg up and back. Hold and breathe. All right, stay there. Because this looks cool. <laughs> All right, exhale, lower the knee. Good, when you're ready, unthread that arm. All right, come up to sumo. All right, so we're going to be kind of preparing for this pose that we're going to get into. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a crazy one or anything, but we don't do it very often in my classes. Um, but instead of, you know how often we're keeping the head up on the floor, but then Shashasana when prep, we put the head in between the hands, okay? Either way, you're trying to stay engaged through triceps, deltoids, and core, all right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to come down like we did earlier. Make sure we're engaged in all those places of distinction, and we're going to walk the feet in. But instead of coming up to headstand, we're going to tiptoe around to one side and get a twist. And then we're going to tiptoe to center. And then we'll eventually go to the other side. Okay. Okay. Show me that. You can't do that. You can do headstand, Barbara. Well, you do it with the apparatus. We're not going all the way up. So just use your arms. Why? It's your neck, right? Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You can do it, Barbara, like this. Okay, so if anybody with neck issues and it's not great for you to be on your head to put the pressure in your neck, you can do it from dolphin. So do it that way instead. You've got the strength to do this. Don't question it. So determine, hands laced, elbow shoulder distance apart. Determine, do you want your head down like Trishasana when prep? Or would you rather be like dolphin with your head up? I don't care. But then tuck your toes, lift your hips. And you can crawl your feet in closer. And what we're trying to do is extend the spine and get the additional lift. Keep the belly long and strong. And now walk the feet over to one side. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. The heels stay up. And then tiptoe across your mat to the other. Good. 
Yeah, so Christy, a little bit more up on the right toes. Yeah, like that. Do you see how that lifted your sits bones? Mm -hmm. And that will take the weight out of your head and bring more energy to your core. Good, when you're ready, walk it back to center. You can come down. And Stephanie went right to where I was taking <laughs> child pose. Now slide your hands in. Building up. You're coming down on your seat. So, you know, we were opening and closing in our postures today, and we weren't really doing what's called vinyoga, yoga, even though we're kind of in out poses. But I kind of want us to do vinyoga yoga for the very beginning. So with vinyoga, yoga, I want you to consider, we're gonna be on the left side, and all we're gonna do, and, and you don't have to have like muscles engaged and full extension of the arm. It's just fanning open to the right on the inhale, and then exit back out on the exhale. But drop the mechanics. Let your breath create the maneuver. Think about the opening of that right arm being completely connected and not separate from the breath. When we feel separated out from the whole, that's usually an imbalance of the third chakra, even though, yes, it's about independence and free will and free choice. The ego is what can separate us from the whole. And I love the acronym that Eckhart Tolle uses. He says, ego can be an acronym for edging God out. Now fan that right arm open and lounge there a moment. Be here. Ready. Contract your core to draw the knees in. And then completely roll to your left, or excuse me, your right side body, bringing your left hand over to join your right palm. So now inhale, synchronize movement with breath as you fan the left arm open. And then exhale, turning back to your right side body. Now remember what we're really trying to do with Vinny Yoga is master the breath. It's really not about the form or the alignment or the execution. It's function over form. And if we're mastering the breath, it's control, slow, it's deep. I want you to consider when you lounge now in that open twist, pausing and remaining here, breathing up through the left side body. I want you to consider this. We begin our life in a merged state in kind of that group mentality because it's tribal identity and it's a family unit. And then as we move up the chakras, we get to the third, and then we start to separate ourselves. 
we emerge into the unique individual that we are. And we rise above the conditioning and programming of our past and create our own personality characteristics and decisions based on what we've learned and what we've been taught. But if we continue to move upstream, we move out of the individual consciousness into universality to universal consciousness. Each one is like a graduation of sorts. Now, grip in your belly, unroll the twist, hug the knees in. <clears throat> and we are ready for Shavasana. Now, I was going to make a suggestion. Don't feel like you have to do this. But we were contracting the abdomen a lot today. And if you're wanting to really open it up, you're welcome to get on top of the bolster with your shoulder blades on the bolster. Your head, arms, feet coming down. So it's almost like a close to a restorative bridge, not quite, because we don't have the neck all the way down. If that's not comfortable for you, or if you just want to be flat on your back, or if you have another idea of what speaks to you today, then create your choice. You close your eyes and settle in. I want us to review the three lower chakras. Not reviewing the information, just kind of looking inwardly at them. And think about the three lower chakras being like lower gears. The ones that keep us grounded, engaged, motivated, and active in the physical world. Consider the time where you had to break away from your family unit and your parents. There may be times where you've had to break away from your peers or even the ideas stemming from your culture. These energy centers are like a receiver creating and distributing energy to handle whatever life Throws our way. And in this third chakra, you have all the inner strength and the resilience you need to make it through those challenges. So for the next few minutes, I want you to breathe into your midsection using
I'm a firm mentally with that. I am confident and capable. I am strong, powerful, and calm. I can do everything I desire. I have the right to act. I stand in my power. I honor myself and the correct choices for me. I am competent and capable. I am strong, powerful, confident. I can do everything I desire. I stand in my power. I have the right to act. And I honor myself and the best choices for me. A deep breath in, slow breath out. You're all in different positions, just showing the beauty of this practice and listening to your body and honoring your own choices. So cautiously begin to exit the pose that you chose. Come up to find a comfortable seat. Monday, we concluded the practice with the mantra Ram Ramaya, which was about evoking joy. Today, I want us to end chanting Ram just once together. Take a deep breath in. Ram. Joining your hands together in prayer. The light and the fire within me bows and respects the light and the fire within each of you. May we walk away from this practice inspired to be more independent and to celebrate everyone's individual choice. Oh, shanti, shanti, shanti. So um, I reached out to Jen this morning because I just realized Monday is a holiday. So I'm going to be combining the two classes and creating a mini workshop like I typically do on holidays. It'll be a gentle blissful flow. <laughs> 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 um, and, uh, and I'm going to sprinkle a couple of restorative poses in there, and it's going to be called the labor of love because we're moving up to the heart chakra. Is it at the same time? 9 30 to 11. Okay. And it is considered.